and welcome to Newsmakers. I'm your host today, Carrie Coogan, and we're here talking baseball with the president of the Negro Leagues Museum, Bob Kendrick. And we are actually at the Negro Leagues Museum in downtown historic 18th and Vine. And it's so great to be here with you today. And this facility is so wonderful. Thanks for having us. Oh, it is my pleasure. We always look forward to having newsmakers here. <laughs> and so, you know, it's great to have you guys back. Yeah. Well, I understand that the organization is celebrating their 25th year anniversary this year. Is that right? Correct. 25 years, Carrie, for a little museum that no one gave any chance of succeeding and here we are 25 years later you know we started in a little tiny one room office space in 1990 across the street inside the old historic lincoln building space about as big as this area where you and i are sitting had a conference room table and guys like the late great buck o'neill and other former negro leaguers who were living here took turns paying the monthly rent to keep that little office open and of course with it our dreams of someday building this and then thinking forwardly ahead at building the future Buck O'Neill Education and Research Center. Mm -hmm. So we essentially went from a one-room office in 1990 to America's National Negro Leagues Baseball Museum today. That is quite an accomplishment, again, for a museum that no one gave any chance of succeeding and certainly succeeding here at a historic 18th and Vine. Yeah, well, congratulations. Thank it's you. wonderful. And I know that you have a lot of celebration, celebrations coming up, but um, talk about the Education Center. You mentioned it. So where, what's happening with that and, and future plans for the museum? It will be at the site of the old Paseo YMCA. The Paseo YMCA, coincidentally, is the birthplace of the Negro Leagues. That's where the leagues were formed in 1920 by Andrew Roop Foster. And so several years ago, even prior to Buck's death, we had dedicated that facility as the home of the future Buck O'Neill Education and Research Center. The project is moving along greatly thanks to the, the lead support of Ollie Gates, who's been the champion of this project and, and the barbecue baron mm -hmm. and, 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 and businessman extraordinaire. Uh, Mr. Gates and Buck were dear, dear friends. And he just committed himself to making sure that Buck's dream of building that education and research center would not die when Buck O'Neill passed away. And so he's really allowed the museum to be able to focus on our core operations while still moving that wonderful project, the restoration of that old YMCA, uh, moving that project along. And we anticipate having the first floor of that building open here real soon. And then we'll just continue to phase by phase until we get that magnificent building complete. Is there anything like this museum anywhere else no. in the United States? And, and if, why not? Why? No. And, and you know, we like having that sole ownership, so to speak. Mm -hmm. They are working on a project in Birmingham that will look at Birmingham's black baseball history. Mm -hmm. and, and I think there will likely be some opportunities for us to collaborate uh, if indeed it stays true to looking in, and pay, paying tribute to Birmingham and this, the Alabama region black baseball history because we don't have enough room to tell everybody's story. And, and Alabama has rich black baseball history. We just didn't think that there was a need to create a competing general history museum, you know, as we've done here and have done extraordinarily well for the last 25 years. But it looks as if they're going to focus on that regionalized history, which I think will allow us to be collabor collaborative in our efforts. So what is, um, really quick, what's going on this summer or what, what can people get involved in if they want to come down to the museum? Well, first and, for, for, first and foremost, we want you to come and experience the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum if you haven't been here. It's a magnificent, magnificent facility. But also mark your calendar for Saturday, August the 1st for the third annual Heart of America Hot Dog Festival. Last year, Kerry, over 4,000 people <laughs> came here to celebrate baseball <laughs> and hot dogs and listen mm. to music and games and other family activities all day is from noon until 10 p.m. on Saturday, August 1st. We're bringing in this year Legendary's R&B group, Average White Band, to perform. And they have a huge following here in Kansas City. Haven't been here in a long time. These guys are from Scotland, but they do soul music like nobody's ever done it before. And so we're excited about this festival. We're excited about the growth of this festival and about getting so many people to come down and experience Historic 18th and Vine, obviously the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum and our sister museum, the American Jazz Museum. So a lot of great things happening. New exhibit that highlights the 25 year anniversary 
of the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. It celebrates the milestones and memories that have occurred over a period of 25 years. We've hosted two American presidents in Bill Clinton and George W. Bush and former Vice President Al Gore, two first ladies uh, in, in Michelle Obama and, and of course Laura Bush and the list just goes on and on of dignitaries and athletes and others who have been here over the course of those 25 years. And so this exhibit is a free exhibition inside our Changing Gallery, highlights those, some of those milestones and memories. Well, I'll definitely be marking my calendar. Thank you so much for being here today and for all you do for the Negro Leagues Museum. Well, thank you, it's great to see you. Great to see you too. That's all the time we have today on Newsmakers, but we'll see you back here next time.